Hi. Current success of AI is powered by deep learning neural networks. But they are facing their limits and limitations, and third AI winter is looming. I'm going to share with you the way we think in Finland we can avoid that AI winter and go forward beyond current uh, state of the art. We all know that uh, computers and artificial intelligence software has done great things during the last 20 years in things we thought that only humans can do. First there was chess, 97, computers, computer won Gary Kaspar, Kasparov, 2011, uh, Geopardy uh, quiz was won by IBM Watson against uh, good players. Then 2015, DeepMind AlphaGo uh, won uh, Chinese Go uh, chess, the Korean champion, 17, Texas Hold'em, and 17, the Chinese uh, master Qi Liu lost to uh, AlphaGo. And I think this picture kind of tells, tells uh, the story of AI success in many fields. It's not only, only things like games and, and, and entertainment, but uh, more serious things like retail, net commerce, entertainment, media, social media applications, uh, and finance, of course, and insurance, which are traditionally data-based systems. And AI, deep learning methods, machine learning, is, is very strong there. Also, medical sector is benefiting from AI. Here's an example uh, from our, our uh, company about using MRI images to early detection of dementias, and then with that you can give the patient uh, the best medication for him or her and improve the quality of, of the life for, for the patient. So we have had great success, uh, the games I mentioned. And then very interesting for me personally is uh, face recognition. 30 years ago, I was a young researcher in computer vision, machine vision. I met uh, in US a researcher called Mathieu Turk, and he was saying that he started with face recognition uh, research. And I thought that that's really interesting and very, very far away. During last 10, 15 years, face, face recognition has become applicable, useful thing in passport control and many other things, many other computer uh, applications. Today we can have a language translation from major languages like China, Chinese, German, French, English, to each other with, with a rather good, good quality. And even from English to Finnish, you can get passable, OK translation. So great success there. And most of this success is based on machine learning, especially deep uh, neural networks. And in previous presentation, we saw what they look like in, in schematically, these deep, deep learning neural networks. And they are very good in classifying things into different categories. Cats and dogs, or cancer, no cancer. Predicting things. And uh, you can use them in, in bots, chatbots, and, and robotic process automation. But I think that's still, that's still more like automation, not, not uh, not AI necessarily, but okay. Uh, and they do nice things. Sometimes they make errors, but this seems like a human, 
human kind of error. If you have a poor eyesight, you could talk, okay, there's a guy and he has some kind of bat. But uh, this is kind of a misleading, uh, funny but misleading interpretation uh, of the situation. Since machine learning neural networks are doing great job, you tend, you have great results, you have even greater expectations, and then you tend to apply those technologies outside their, their actual area, where they don't actually fit so well. And then you get disappointments. And you get criticism. And there are many, uh, some reasons for, some important reasons for this. Machine learning is database and therefore it's data hungry. And that limits the scope where you can actually use it. Because you don't always have lots of data for teaching the algorithms and or the data is, is kind of bad quality like we noticed in the panel discussion. And neural networks are kind of black box. If you have million neural, net, neural nodes in the network, you have million coefficients. Nobody can understand how it works, actually. You can have some kind of explanation, and this means it's non-transparent, and you have issue there in many applications. For example, if you are dealing with the social security decision or, or some other, other thing you try to automatize, and if you cannot explain it, it's not legal, at least in Finland. They are brittle. That means small change in the input data may cause dramatic change in the output. I think some of you have seen examples of that. And more fundamentally, it's the machine learning systems, they deal with numbers. They don't understand, they haven't any clue about the content or meaning of the data they are, are, are dealing with, and they don't use the constraints of physical world. So, they, for example, they could predict that something has a negative weight or something like that, if the numbers uh, point to that way. So, machine learning is very good in pattern recognition and prediction. Pattern recognition means this classification, identifying things like faces. So, some people go as far as to say that, okay, it's not, nothing more than statistics 2.0. And when we are in this, this uh, situation, there's disappointment and some veterans of AI say that, okay, now it comes again, we are facing the third AI winter. So AI winter is a term meaning that after a hype, there's uh, disillusionment, no investment in the venture capital, from the venture capital to, to startups, uh, no research funding, Researchers say that I'm not doing AI anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm doing data analytics. So the whole term is, is banned. And uh, no investments in the companies, in the industry. That's, that's the big thing. And the progress stalls. We have had two, two of those. I remember the second one. Anybody remember, remembers the expert systems? Yeah, and there was disappointment in around 91 or something like that. And then nobody was talking about AI for more than 10, 15 years. So we Finns shouldn't be afraid of winter. We like skiing and so on. So this winter is still something we don't want to see. And how to avoid AI winter? I think we have to address the real issues, the real problems, not just to talk them away. And we have a bunch of new a, uh, machine learning methods, transfer learning, reinforcement learning, and so on, which can be used with less data, probably. So they, they say. And make, making it less data hungry. That's good. Hybrid methods, I think, is a very important thing, in, especially in industry. Uh, there we can 
take into account the physical constraints of the world. Say you are optimizing a process industry, uh, part of the process, then you have some physical knowledge which you can use. So broadening the scope where you can apply AI methods and making it more reliable. Then there is a research direction how to make AI explain itself, how to uh, even go towards certification of AI algorithms, for example, in medical use. Uh, for example, France is, is demanding that we should have certified algorithms in certain areas of, of uh, industries and, and healthcare. In the longer run, we could look at the toolbox of AI methods. I think that uh, uh, the in the first talk, Sven was talking about semantics, and I think that's very, very interesting and very good approach. Look at the toolbox in the old, old AI methods. Make the dust go away and, and use them. Because actually, neural networks were we saw the computer from 81 to do neural computing, and they were in the toolbox for 25 years because we didn't have the computing power and we didn't have enough data to use, actually, neural networks. They became useful around 2010, 12, 13. So there might be useful, useful uh, tools in the toolbox. But now let's focus on the using the physical constraints first. So what we are doing in Finland uh, to avoid the third AI winter. This is a case of a real pulp mill where we, together with our customer, optimized their production so that they got the same amount of product, the pulp, with 700 truckloads of wood less. Very good for their business, very good for the environment. And this relies also on AI, but also on the what we call hybrid model. So what's the hybrid model? Hybrid model, and why do we need them? Hybrid model is needed, especially in industrial domain, where we are on the upper right-hand corner of that four field. We have less data, but still we have to be more accurate and more reliable than in business to commerce, uh, business to customer cases. Let's say that, look at the lower, lower corner, the opposite corner. I'm buying uh, shoes from a web shop and I want black shoes. It offers me brown shoes, big mistakes, mistake in a certain sense, but actually I, I wouldn't mind. It's not a big deal. I just do other search. But if I make a some, same kind of mistake in controlling that pulp mill. Maybe the, the process goes wild, maybe, maybe I lose 100,000 euros or, or something worse. So ha more, more stringent uh, requirements and still less data. How to cope with that? We use hybrid models there. That's the solution. So we bring in the engineering models, the physical physics models, the chemical models, the tacit knowledge of the operators of the system, and combine that with the data-driven approach of AI. And we get the benefits from the both of those. Better prediction, better model, no uh, uh, funny or uh, dangerous results. Then, I mentioned the ethical and acceptability question. Finland, like many, many countries, have national ethics, uh, national AI pro pro program. And in the Finnish program, which is driven by the government, they decided to invite companies to identify the ethical questions and try to find solutions together for those uh, questions. And the companies joined. There's the major, a major retail company, major bank, major uh, pulp and paper company, and many other companies in the group. And they 
already have identified ethical questions and they are finding the solutions and you can go to that web link to see what they are doing and what kind of questions they are dealing with. So I think we have means to avoid the third AI winter and I would like to challenge you to think that could we in Europe, in Finland, in Europe, take advantage of these uh, new, uh, new ways, new approaches and, and kind of compete better with Alibaba, Tencent, Google and Amazon in at least in the industrial and medical healthcare sectors by taking into account the physical constraints of the real world. May, using constraint models, they are less data hungry, they are uh, usable in many uh, applications where the basic data driven um, machine learning, deep neural networks as such don't work. And also you take this ethical approach and making make us more competitive and make the AI uh, acceptable for the people working in the companies and, and general, general public politicians and so on. So this way I think that we could and can avoid the third AI winter. <laughs>